And the blueberry beak is slim and, and uh, very delicate. And our native birds are really no match for this house sparrow. This is not a native bird. It was brought over here in the 1850s by somebody in New York City who thought, <laughs> who thought it would be a good idea to bring some house sparrows over here to control the insects. Well, they don't even eat insects. They eat seeds. That horse droppings, yes. They eat, uh, anyway, uh, that was not a good idea because by you know, just a few years, this bird was everywhere over the United States, had taken over. And um, I, didn't, I live in the Woodlands, which is north of Houston, and when I first moved there in the early 80s, it was a young community, and we didn't have any house sparrows because we had not become so urbanized. But now we are, and we have house sparrows. And they really like the Martin house. And that's where I trap all my house sparrows. I've got two of the doors in the Martin house. Uh, I ordered these. They're called sparrow doors, and they're a trap. And they'll they'll trap the uh, they'll trap anybody that goes in there. But they're too small for the Martins to get in, so you can't trap a Martin in there, which you would not want to anyway. Or you can use that Van Earp trap in your very own Texas Bluebird Society nest box, and we have those for sale today. And Cashiers, that's me. I never say yes to me. <laughs> anyway, you can get a sparrow trap or a bird trap for fifteen dollars. And it, we already have the screws mounted in the nest box because ours opens from the side. We'd have to take it apart to get those screws in there. But don't put the trap in there and then go off on a cruise. Okay, you've got to monitor that. You've got to be home when you monitor this, because birds that are trapped inside a hot nest box will not survive very long. So um, anyway, I was trapping birds for quite a while, and my husband, who was sweet as pie, and he would not hurt anything. He said, Linda, um, you know, when we trap these birds, he said, can we just take them over to Walmart and let them go? He said, they, they have friends over there, because you're on know, Walmart parking lot, all the starlings and the sparrows. And I said, stay out of my project. <laughs> and so I have other friends that say, you know, you know these sweet little birds, how can, you, how can you kill a bird? And they said, well, I didn't think I could ever kill a bird one time. And then I went on this website called Sialis.org, S-I-A-L-I-S dot org. And I looked at all the pictures of the dead blue birds and other birds that had been killed by a house sparrow. And I thought, okay, dead blue birds, dead house sparrows. Well, you know which one out? The house sparrow is going to be the dead one. So I got up my courage and, and I started killing sparrows. And I haven't looked back. <laughs> And you say, oh, but they're God's little creatures. Well, yes, they are. And he made them, and he put them over in Europe. <laughs> he didn't put them over here. <laughs> Jesus never intended for the house girl to be in this country. So, this is another one of God's little creatures. Okay? How many of y'all have stepped on one of these? So don't get your back up about me killing house sparrows. Okay? Now, this is what a house sparrow nest looks like. It, it, they fill the box with grass and weeds, and they'll use cellophane off your cigarette packs or whatever to make their box. They don't care. They fill the whole thing. It's like a tunnel. And way back in there is where they lay their eggs. And sparrow eggs are very variable. You can see we've got one bluebird egg there, the second from the left and the bottom. But they, they're usually speckled. And uh, the male house sparrow claims the box. He sits on top of that box and he calls for his female. They only have one note, G, 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 okay? So he'll call till he gets the female. So it's real important, you know, to, to trap the male, if you can, to get rid of him. One pair of house sparrows could theoretically multiply into 1,250 birds over a five-year period, you know? It's a whole lot of house sparrows. So you meet even the three amigos here who are taking their little bath, the three little bluebird fledglings know the enemy when they see it. Little house sparrows trying to join the party, nothing doing, they say. 
So what's the big deal? Why not live and let live, okay? Well, I'd be willing to do that if the sparrows would cooperate, but the sparrows want to control the territory, and in order to do that, they have to eliminate all the other birds, and so they go on a, on a, on a rampage here. And uh, control is necessary. They're very aggress aggressive. They'll attack the adult birds. They'll go in the nest box and pick holes in the eggs and throw them out. They'll pick holes in the little babies and kill them. And make up your mind. It, it's really better to not have a nest box at all if you're not going to control your house sparrows. So here are uh, these pictures of pretty vivid here. Here's a bluebird on top of its nest box eating mealworms. I don't recommend you put your dish of mealworms on top of the nest box. Put it somewhere else in the yard because other birds like to eat those mealworms too. The bird went into the nest box followed by a house sparrow. And before the homeowner, she was watching this through the window, could get out there, that sparrow had picked that bluebird to death and there's his picture on the right. Absolutely destroyed his head. Do you have any house lights? I don't know how to do that. But Kevin does. You know, Linda, we uh, came from your mother. Oh, yeah. Uh huh, we need to do that. Send the house bears to the middies. Mm -hmm. They're in the middle of five or six, we can't tell how many, dead little, five, dead little bluebirds picked to death by a house sparrow. On the bottom is a nest. Can you zoom? Yeah, it's just kind of hard to see. On the bottom, my bluebird has built a nest. The sparrow went in and killed her. She's off to the left side there. And she laid her egg on top of the dead bluebird's body. Now that's cold. Here are two more little bluebirds that have been, and they're just days old. They're not even, all they got is this little gray furs on them. They've been pecked to death by a house sparrow. So y'all ready to take care of some swans? I got y'all psyched up. Well, to read more about house sparrows, you can go to this website, silas.org, and uh, look at more pictures if you need to more courage. Far in advance. This is a sparrow spooker. This particular one can be ordered from sparrowtraps.net, or you can make your own out of PVC pipe and use the shiny mylar strips. And please replace those strips every year, at least once a year, because they become dull and they will become less effective. Now, the day to install the sparrow spooker is the day Mama Bluebird lays her first egg. She's got an investment in that nest. She's not going to abandon it. But the next day, and you know, bluebirds lay their eggs between dawn and 11 o'clock in the morning. There are people that sit around and research all these kind of details about bluebirds. They must not have very many weeds to put in their yard. <laughs> they do that. So between dawn and 11, you don't want to be monitoring the nest box. Go after 11 o'clock in the morning. Monitor that nest box the second day and make sure Mama has laid her second egg. If she has not laid that second egg, take the sparrow spooker down and give her another day or two to get used to it, but she will. I've never had uh, bluebirds rejected. I've had the male sit up there and tug on the mylar strips, like, get this thing off the house. <laughs> Um, and then, of course, this is the active control. This is your uh, Van Ert trap. This is mine right here. And you just trip it by, it, it looks kind of like a little easel. It's got a little notch in this triangle. You set it like that, and then when the bird steps on this wire, it snaps shut. It's not her. It scares the bee jabbers out of them, let me tell you. But they'll get over it. Now, the next, you see that that uh, trap is tripped. 
Well, go up there and open the door of that box. It's bye bye bird if you do that, and you think they're going to come back to get trapped again, and then you get you a laundry bag like this, a mesh laundry bag that you can see through, and you put the whole bag over the nest box and you close it. Then you open it, and the bird will fly out, and it's in the bag now. Then you identify it. Make sure that it's a house sparrow. If it's not a house sparrow, if it's a chickadee or a bluebird, let it go. It'll get over it. But if it's a house sparrow, please do not let it go. It becomes someone else's problem if you relocate it. So you want to deal with it. If you can't deal with it, find somebody who will deal with it, okay? Now, some people say, oh, I just put them in a bag and stick them in the freezer. <laughs> well, that to me is a slow death. I would not want to freeze to death. And, and so I don't want my sparrows to, um, to suffer. I just want them dead. I don't want them to suffer. <laughs> and so some people say, well, I just take the, the baggie, I put them in a baggie, and I tape it to the exhaust pipe of the car and turn it on. And I say, have you passed gasoline lately? I am not going to waste money on killing sparrows. So um, anyway, one swift uh, or two swift hit on a big rock and they are dead. So that's, I, can't, I can't kill them with my hands, but I can bang them on. And I go around to the side of the house where the two little neighborhood boys who think I'm wonderful can't see me. They, they think I love birds, and I do. But one day they had a flock of uh, cedar wax wings hit into their window, and they came running over to me and said, Miss Crippen, come, there are birds on the way, what am I going to do with them? And I said, well, let me go look. And so, of course, a couple of them were dead, but some of them were just sitting there looking like, oh, what did they do? I said, well, you just leave them there, and they'll fly away, and I'll take things that are dead away and give them a burial. So, anyway, he was like, well, you should know what to do. Okay, there are instructions if you have your own nest box. Men, read the instructions. This tab does not fit on the screws unless you put it on there like Mr. Van Ert says. You set it, it trips, there we Oh, you can buy this from sparrowtraps.net too. You can catch them by the dozen. Ben Zimmerman, who is the, has that website, Silas.org, she puts a decoy. The first male sparrow she catches, she puts him in that cage. And he sings and tells all his friends there's a party. She puts food and water in the cage and catches sparrows by the dozen. There's another part in my trap of two Carolina chickadees. Uh, not Carolina chickadees, Carolina wrens. You know how curious they are. I finally let them go. If you get a native bird in there with the sparrows, there's a hole there to uh, reach in and grab it. Put your gloves on, you know. There is a... Uh, is this working? Midway on the right side. This right here, this big platform, you might want to put a few seed there, but put most of the seed on this little platform behind. But that's the, uh, that's the elevator that takes them down into the trap, okay? And once they're down there, they cannot escape. You just give them plenty of food and water, and they'll call their friends to the party. Oh, you just reach in there and get a couple at a time, put them in a bag, and you them in the rock garden. <laughs> Now, oh, here's another. This is like giving them a manicure. You know, when you go for the manicure, it doesn't hurt. There are no nerve endings in your fingernails, and there are no nerve endings in the bird's wings. So on the males, you want to cut five feathers, and the females, four, on the leading side, edge of the wing. And you cut them off, cut both wings. And this makes them very docile. They're not aggressive to other birds. In fact, they get the feeling so good they won't even breed. But you know what? Those feathers go back. Do you think they're going to come back next year for their manicure? No. This is a waste of time, in my opinion. <laughs> so the birds are going to originally pay you for anything that you do to take care of them. This is the one of David Kinnear's photos of one of his fledglings. I just love his photos. Um, and I think that's all my presentation. Do you have questions? Isn't there somebody that would just feed those house sparrows too? Something that would just feed them? Okay. 
Well, you know, uh, I've heard that some people will call up a rep to rehabilitate her, to, um, you know, to rehabilitate his talks and stuff like that, and he was telling me to have lunch, you'd like to bring their you know, raptors. But you know, these people that rehabilitate birds, they're not in the killing sparrows, so. Um, <laughs> yes, you may rehabilitate your sparrows, you don't want that. I have a friend whose husband does all the hospital killing because she can't do it. She used to shoot him with a BB gun, but uh, she can't kill him otherwise, and it's against the law to shoot with BB guns in the woodlands. So her husband was out of town. She actually called me up and said, I have a sparrow in the box. Can you please come get it? So I had to go over there. I'm for hire. Went and got her sparrow and killed it for her. Uh, so, you know, you, you just got to kill them yourself. And if you can't bear to kill them, you know, put them in that zip bag and stick them in the freezer. I mean. <laughs> Oh, there was one man who listened to my presentation, he was one of our main speakers, and he said that the main method of dealing with them was a violent death, you know. Now, those were baby bluebirds. That was a pretty violent death that they faced, too. And um, he, he thought uh, that the exhaust fume was a better deal, you know. <laughs> But you know, I gotta squat down, my knees aren't too good anymore. I squat down there on that exhaust pellet, I'm not gonna do it. Do you have any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Uh, 